Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Monday movie. I'm Mr. Blue Summers. So last week, we took a look at how you can illuminate this warehouse scene using the V-Ray Sun and Sky light object. This week, we're going to be taking a look at the same scene, except we're going to be illuminating it at night using the V-Ray light objects. Just like last week, you'll see that we can get excellent results without a whole lot of effort. So let's get started. I'm going to go to my Create panel, click on Lights, V-Ray, and I'm going to select a V-Ray light. And what I'm going to do is go into my top viewport, right click on camera, views, top. And I'm just going to put in a few area lights out here by the garage. I create one, put it right here. And then I'm going to hold down shift, click drag, and create a second, an instance. So I've got two lights that are out there. I'm going to switch over to the perspective viewport. And I'm just going to make sure that they are positioned right at the ceiling. We can just pretend that they're that they're light fixtures. This is a very basic scene. Okay, so let's go back to the camera. Now without adjusting any of the settings, let's take a render and see what this looks like. Okay, so it's not bad, but not great. Now the two issues that stand out here are that the lights are not bright enough and we need global illumination to help us push that light out into the scene. So I'm going to close that render preview. I'm going to click on render setup. It opens my render setup panel. I'm going to engage in direct illumination. I definitely want it to show the calculation phase so that I can see the render as it's happening. And I can close this window. And then I want to turn up my lights a little bit. I'll say 13 multiplier. So we're going to get some bright light out here, and it's just going to let it drift into the scene. Let's take another render. So this scene is looking pretty good now. We've gotten this light to bounce around the warehouse, and we still have very strong control over where the light originates and where it goes. Let's take a quick look at some of the parameters in the V-Ray light. First things first, we're able to change the type of light. We can select a plane, which is what we're using here. It's a standard flat area light. We can select a dome, just like the original skylight object. And finally, we can select a spherical light, kind of like an omni light. We're just going to leave that on plane. We can, of course, change the intensity and the units by which that intensity is measured. There's also the size of the area light in this size group. And then finally, there's a series of options that we can use to change how this light interacts with the scene. We have the ability to turn on and off shadows. We can select whether we want the light object to be invisible or not. And we can also determine whether this light is a skylight portal and part of the V-Ray sun and sky system. And down at the very bottom of these options, we're able to alter the sampling. So we can determine the quality of the shadows that this light produces. If we turn the subdivisions down, we'll get a faster render, but the shadows won't look quite as good. So in the typical V-Ray style, these light objects are very easy to use. They're very simple and they yield great results. Let's take this scene, replicate a few more lights, and then we'll take a final render. I'm going to open up my array, tools, array, click preview. Lost my, lost my viewport there. So array, I'll take just four lights, preview. Oh. Okay, it's along the x-axis, there we go, okay, switch back to the camera and take our final render. So this is the effect that we were looking to create, a nighttime scene in our warehouse where we illuminate the room using V-Ray area lights. You'll find that area lights, even though you're forced to use them, are still very versatile and give you a lot of control over how the scene is rendered but you do have to be willing to adjust the quality parameters according to the light and where it's positioned in your scene. For example, these warehouse lights do need a relatively high sampling in order to arrive at this quality level. But on the other hand, if these were, say, night lights in a children's bedroom, you wouldn't want to have very high sampling. Be sure to tune in next week, where we'll be learning about materials in V-Ray. Thanks for tuning in to another Monday movie. 
You can find all of my Monday movies as well as tutorials, resources, and downloads on my website, www.mrbluesummers.com. 